Section 17 of From the Latch Key of My Book House. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. From the Latch Key of My Book House, edited by Olive Bupre Miller. Kingsley, Charles, English, 1818 to 1875 on the rocky coast of devonshire lies the queer little fishing village of cloverley that goes tumbling down from the top of the cliff to the bright blue waters of the bay below its little cobblestone street so steep that mules can scarcely climb it and its tiny white cottages clinging goodness knows how to the rock each peering curiously over the roof of the one below in cloverley a group of old fishermen may always be found sunning themselves on benches looking far out to sea and telling wild tales of the ocean here the rector's small son charles kingsley used often to come to hear the old tars tell their stories and the life of the hardy fishermen their toils and dangers stirred him deeply all devonshire its moors and fens its fragrant country lanes charles kingsley loved it all but by and by young charles had to leave his beloved and beautiful devonshire and go to king's college in london how he hated life in the city often he dreamed of leaving the university and going to america to be a trapper and hunter in the west just then however he fell deeply in love with a certain young lady whose parents could not welcome a penniless student so he made haste to finish his schooling and became the curate of eversley full of boyish fun and overflowing vitality was the young curate of evansley though he was deeply religious too and worked with tireless enthusiasm everybody loved him and he loved everybody the poor and the oppressed most of all presently he began to write pamphlets and books on all the great topics that stirred men's minds in his day and so vigorously did he write that his influence spread far beyond the limits of his parish slowly he rose to be one of the great men of his time canon of westminster and chaplain to queen victoria but the very best of his books are certain stories astir with the adventurous spirit of old cloverly days important works water babies the heroes greek fairy tales westward ho la fontaine jean day french poet sixteen twenty one to sixteen ninety five fables in rhyme illustrated by john ray la fontaine's fables illustrated by boutet de manzel lagerlof selma swedish eighteen fifty eight in the pretty rectory at marbaka manor in the beautiful province of varmland in sweden there once lived a little girl the rectory was a lovely place sweet with laughter and peaceful joys with love of books and people as a little girl selma lagerlof preferred reading or imagining stories to out-of-door sports she often played theatre with her brothers and sisters and it was always selma who hung up the quilts and blankets to make the stage dressed up the little actors and told them how to say their parts at marbaka manor selma lived for twenty years reading writing and dreaming that some time a stranger would come to her gate and bring her fame by publishing her stories but by and by the pretty old rectory was sold and selma had to go to stockholm to teach school one day it flashed upon her like a blinding light that she must write a story of the varmland of the people and country she knew so well so she began the saga augusta berlin but she wrote so slowly slowly it was years before the first chapter was finished then one day a prize was offered by a magazine for the best novelette and selma's sister urged her to complete the first five chapters of her story not only did she win the prize but the magazine offered to publish the book if she would complete it at once accordingly a friend gave her enough money to free her from the necessity to teach and in a year she completed the work ghost of berlin brought her fame and fortune and enabled her to buy back her dear old home in varmland in nineteen o eight the school authorities invited selma lagerlof 
to write a book for the schools which should keep in the hearts of the young people of today the old folklore and history of sweden and teach them the geography and the natural history of their country the results were the wonderful adventure of nils and further adventures of nils books which are classics in every country and won for selma the nobel prize the world's greatest prize for literature larkham lucy american 1826 to 1893 a girl who worked in the mills at lowell massachusetts and wrote for the mills workers magazine later the editor of our young folks lazarus emma american eighteen forty nine to eighteen eighty seven emma lazarus was a young jewish girl shy and sensitive who lived in a world of poetry and books and published her first volume of verse when she was fifteen sombre tragic poems breathing the tragic spirit of her race she worshipped emerson and he was her literary adviser writing her what books to study after the anti-jewish outrages in russia and germany in eighteen eighty one she threw herself heart and soul into the movement against such barbarism not only did she write poetry in a crusade of protest but she worked untiringly among the terror-stricken immigrants who flocked into this country such a woman could well understand what america meant as a land of promise to the poor and oppressed of europe lear edward english eighteen twelve to eighteen eighty eight lear's nonsense rhymes with their comic pictures are child classics lindsay maud american kindergarten worker eighteen seventy four important works mother stories more mother stories story garden for little children lindsay nicholas vetchel american eighteen seventy nine a young boy from springfield illinois once dreamed an exciting dream of an old-fashioned battle between armored men he jumped out of bed at once and wrote the dream down in a poem called the battle but the next morning his poem seemed so much less interesting than his dream that he had to help it out by drawing a picture when the same poet artist began however to write verse in earnest in new york he found no market for his poems accordingly he decided that the common man must learn to reverence beauty before beauty could succeed in america with only a bundle of songs for his fortune he left new york and tramped through eight states begging food and lodgings as he went and reciting his poems in return preaching the gospel of beauty to the farmer the most worthwhile element he believed in american life important works the congo the chinese nightingale longfellow henry wadsworth eighteen o seven to eighteen eighty two in an historic old wooden house overshadowed by splendid elms and standing on one of the spacious streets of cambridge that delightful old university town there once lived a modest deep-hearted gentleman whose highest ambition was to be a perfect man and through sympathy and love to help others to be the same the old house had been built before the revolution and occupied by washington when he took command of the american army in seventeen seventy six its study windows looked across the green brighton meadows far away to the brookline hills it was that study just at twilight that the poet used to hear the patter of little feet in the room above him and see in the lamplight his children on the stairs a rush and a raid from the doorway they were swarming over his chair alice laughing allegra and edith with golden hair a scholar and a poet was longfellow a professor at harvard university and yet he always seemed to have time for everybody and everything never was he too busy to see a caller or to help by word or deed whoever was in distress often strangers called to see him or children not venturing to call hung about his garden gate hoping just to catch a glimpse of him to such his courtesy was complete he never seemed to think they had come for a peep at him but took it for granted that they wanted to see washington's study which he showed them with simple pleasure 
indeed far from trying to hide himself from intruders he rarely even drew the blinds of his study windows at night what a sunny genial nature was his full of courage tenderness and strength in joy and sorrow he lived life beautifully and happily with neither envy nor malice and with unbounded charity through his mother longfellow was descended from john alden and priscilla those precious puritan lovers whose quaint courtship he described so beautifully in miles standish in his boyhood he lived amid the quiet surroundings of portland maine where he was born and he never forgot the pleasant streets of that dear old town the shadowy lines of trees which permit here and there through their branches a sudden glimpse of the sea he never forgot the black wharves and the slips and the sea tides tossing free and spanish sailors with bearded lips and the beauty and mystery of the ships and the magic of the sea his college days at bodwin where he was a classmate of hawthorne introduced him to the falls of the androscroggin river wild scenery and rich in indian lore and legend the greater part of his life however was spent at cambridge writing and teaching quiet days and little varied save for frequent trips to europe he was a poet of the past of legendary heroes and not like lowell a moulder of the present but the music and deep feeling of his work have made him more beloved than any other american poet important works hiawatha the courtship of miles standish evangeline lothrop margaret sidney american 1844 important works the five little peppers and how they grew lowell amy american 1874 amy lowell holds a high rank among the modern school of poets for her imagery color power and vivid characterization lowell james russell american eighteen nineteen to eighteen ninety one the foremost american poet in expressing the ideals of the early american republic and the first editor of the atlantic monthly macdonald george scotch eighteen twenty four to nineteen o five george macdonald was a minister teacher and writer who kept through life the heart of a child he was deeply religious though not in a conventional way and had a heart overflowing with charity for all though he was never very well off and had a family of eleven children of his own he frequently added to it by adopting children in need and his most enduring work has proved to be his beautiful children's stories at the back of the north wind the princess and curdie the princess and the goblin end of section seventeen